if you're watching this, I just want to say thank you. It means a lot to me. In today's talk, we're going to be talking about creating design consistency without losing authenticity. So let's dive into it. Um, a quick intro about myself. My name is Jesus uh, Sandrea. I'm a, a male with dark hair and wearing what appears to be a light blue sweatshirt. I also happen to be a designer within the site design team at GitHub. And in today's talk, you're going to hear me talk a lot about these four principles, which are authenticity, quality, emotions, and growth. So what's the problem we're trying to solve for? Well, creating bespoke landing pages takes a lot of time and effort, like, like a lot. I'm going to give you all a an example that I think the entire design community looks up to, and those are apples. Um, when when you visit their website, you can really see the quality and effort that's been put into something often expected from large teams. But at GitHub, though, we are a very small team in which we need to move fast with far less resources, but at the same time, without giving up quality, which leads to the question, how might we optimize for scalability and quality of future landing pages, but retaining our cultures, ship often, ship to learn. And I like this quote that goes, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step, and then it goes into mastery to achieve, not in the depth and quality of doing one thing right at a time. Uh, so, what it means is that in order to achieve this level of quality, we needed to break things down and turn them into the best they can be. So we focus a lot into breaking down the output into quality bits. We identify areas that would improve the current level for a site, such as type, um, and that includes kerning, the line height, character counts, how we apply gradients, the color theory. We also consider layouts, optical flow, grids, et cetera. All of this led us into a journey. And that journey being one where we initiated an audit of our component library and did a comprehensive refactor of it. In other words, we were setting up strong foundations for a very strong design system. And later on, it allowed us to introduce new components such as the Pento grids along with everybody else, but um, altogether it allows us to create more uniform landing pages, which reduce the amount of effort and enables our team and others to move faster. In this example, you can observe our now deprecated kitchen sink in the left in comparison to one of the most recent ones in the right. Um, it introduces our new type scale and spacing modules, allowing elements to breathe. We also consider a consistent layout alignment amongst other things. With all this progress now, we have solved for scalability slash growth and quality and consistency. But what about authenticity and emotion? It feels very dull and quite fun, frankly boring. So the question now becomes, how do we set them apart? The aesthetic appeal of a design is equally as important as its functionality. Sometimes as designers, we cave under the external pressure to put more emphasis on the user experience or the strategy in which we lose some of our authenticity. I almost feel there's a, an art aspect that often gets overlooked. Um, Michelangelo famously said that within a block of marble, the sculpture area exists. And his job was to rem merely remove the excess material to reveal it. This idea resonates a lot with me because it's where the templates have been already created. And now the focus shifts to infusing these templates with emotions to weave everything together. And it's where our direction comes into play. To set them apart, we need to create a deeper connection and to create purpose. It's where we begin to interconnect and to aim to evoke emotions, also to strive to create designs that are remarkable, beautiful, and memorable. 
it is very difficult to ignore our emotions since they play a significant role in communication and often drive our decision-making process. This emotional influence, it's uh, very evident in consumer behavior. It is when, in, a, a clear example, it's when individuals buy or choose Voss water over Aquafina and it's just water, just one makes you feel something versus the other one being purely functional. Users often want to be engaged, have fun and entertain. It is why micro interactions are so successful. It is why we use humor. Humor often relaxes our brains. In this example, uh, we can observe the principles of emotional design. Don Norman came up with these principles and it's kind of broken down into three layers. The first one being uh, visceral design. It is based purely in aesthetics and first impressions. It is kind of that wow effect. The second one would be behavioral design where form tries function and it includes usability and understanding. The third one would be reflective design where it's more about the brand and the story of the product. It's usually associated with part of your identity. And of course, ideally we would want to strike for a balance where we find delight. Oops. And with all that said, here are now some of the results of how we connect everything, everything together. And here we can observe our mental Laya component, which it leans into visceral design through our brand expression and brand elements. Uh, you can see how the uh, the the brand elements are connected inside the pentos and and we are also leveraging our iconography. In this case, the security icon inside the pento, and we are also playing that with that brand, brand element once again in the pricing table by in background putting it in the background and we're leading your eye with that brand element and also through our brand color pillar we land into this cinematic look that all together looks very pleasant and overall it creates a, a, a good lasting and memorable impression we apply behavioral design through usability and providing information at a quick glance and lastly a reflective by keeping our GitHub theme uh, throughout the page and leaning to our characters, in this case, called Pilot. In this other example, um, we have a very similar pento layout, but leaning towards a much more calm emotion. Once again, you can see how we are integrating the principles of emotional design by how we connect the shape language and how we are connecting connecting it with the product UI. We put a lot of effort into how we represent our product UI and carefully abstract it, blending it with the rest of the layout through lighting. In this final hero iteration for, this is the final hero iteration for the GitHub Copilot. And it's another good example of how by applying emotions, we make it much more authentic. Uh, it's visceral through branding. It's behavioral through function as it provides a demo of how the product works. And it's reflective through the representation of our GitHub Copilot. We made it interactive. So it's delightful. And also, it's a subtle nod to Clippy and the nostalgic feeling of it. Generally speaking, on our flagship pages, we opt in for a very bespoke moment at the top of the page because it allows us to create that connection. In this example, we have some early concept explorations for the GitHub Enterprise page. And overall, it's less product driven in comparison to GitHub Copilot and more so brand focus. We were trying to convey the message of GitHub being the all in developer platform. So we were experimenting with how do we communicate that? We were trying to avoid alluding to GitHub being an app or rather a package or a bundle and more sort of a collective platform. 
in this slide, you can see that this was our main reference for what it is, the final iteration of the hero. And you can observe that GitHub as a platform. And hence why we end up in this concept where it's a representation of all the brand pillars coming together to form a platform, that platform being enterprise. And although not everything is shiny and this concept has presented some challenges, like we are actively solving for one of those being ensuring that the graphic stays above the full across devices. And we are also experimenting with the scroll hijacking versus an auto playing video to in the search to solve for a more explicit platform story. And overall, we lean into a much more aspirational concept that represents our values and mostly, mostly important, uh, more importantly, uh, it's communicative. And by doing so, it's emotional and thus authentic. And if you made it this far, I just want to say thank you. And also before thank you, uh, before closing, I just want to thank the team that worked on the projects mentioned a second ago. Shout out to the rest of the site design team, the primary brand team, engineering and branding. And now back to the MCs. Thank you.